baptism is a symbol of what Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection. Being lowered in the water represents our old life dying. Life dying. Just as Jesus was dead and buried, our past and future sins are gone forever. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. When we are raised out of the water, it represents our new life in Christ. Just as Jesus was resurrected, we are a new, are a new creation. The old is gone. The new has the come. New has come. Today, today we celebrate as people take, take their, their next step. step and tell the world that Jesus has brought them from death to life. To life. To life. Today we celebrate the miracle of a changed life based upon their profession in Jesus Christ. In the name, in the name of, the Father, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are buried with Christ and raised to, and walk. Raised to walk in newness of life. Newness of life. As we go into a time of worship today, I also want to take this time to introduce you to our new pianist. You know, Chris Staubham, we had uh, with us for a while, has taken a new job and has moved to the state of Florida. We have been blessed to be able to find someone to take Chris's place. And I would like you at the time to recognize Stephanie Lorand as she begins playing with us. We want to welcome you to this worship service uh, at the Hebrew United Methodist Church. My name is Pete Ward. Uh, and I have the privilege of serving here at the Hebrew and United Methodist Church. Um, we are going to be uh, meeting in person next week, January 17th. It's uh, our idea, hope that we will be able to come together uh, for in-person worship. We're going to follow all the guidelines set by the CDC. Uh, we'll continue to follow those guidelines on social distancing uh, and wearing masks. But our, our, our hope is that the numbers are at a level today, and hopefully they'll remain that way going forward, that uh, we feel that it will be safe uh, to come together for in-person worship. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany. It's the Sunday that we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And while the video you saw earlier as we began this service uh, was a video really that saw uh, submersion uh, as uh, a form of baptism, and the United Methodist Church we actually celebrate baptism by any number of different ways, from, from that full, full submersion to basic sprinkling. It varies by pastor and by church. And the reason is that, our opinion, it's not about the water. It's all about God's grace and God's love and mercy. On the 17th, when we come together, we will celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, normally, we would do that on the first Sunday of the month. Uh, but because we haven't met and, and our goal is to be in person, uh, we move that time period to the 17th. So be, come prepared uh, to, to be able to celebrate together uh, that time. We're taping this service for January 10th. Today is Thursday, actually January 7th. Yesterday we witnessed an assault on our national capital. What we saw was a demonstration, but it wasn't some demonstration on, on some policy we disagree with. It was not a peaceful protest. It was a direct assault on America's democracy, fueled by people spreading outright lies. When I first came here to the Hebrew United Methodist Church, I promised that politics had no place in the church. I believe that more today than ever before. But yesterday, four people lost their lives. Today, this divisiveness and this hostility between the political parties has got to stop, and it's got to stop now. We are better than this. So I ask that you would pray with me. Almighty God, we come before you this day, a broken people, a broken nation. Send your Holy Spirit to surround each and every one of us, reminding us of who we are and whose we are. That we are more than Democrats or Republicans. That we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Soften our hearts. Remove our anger. 
And mold us once again into your people. For you are a God who watches over us, offering us light and hope. We ask that you be with us this day as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. That you would help us to remember your healing, cleansing, claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the waters be for us an image of hope, bringing us closer to you. Loving God, embrace us again with your love as we open our hearts to you this day. Amen. I ask that you'd sit back, relax, prepare your hearts and your minds for worship as we listen to our prelude, uh, and then the praise team will lead us in some opening music. You know, the Bible tells us to let your light shine before others. Now, that doesn't apply just to us. It it applied to biblical characters as well. Think about John the Baptist for a minute. He let God's light shine through him. He didn't hide it under a a bushel basket. He didn't let Satan blow it out. And his light continued to shine brightly when Jesus came. What's the condition of your light today? Sing with us. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, 
I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I did not under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. I did not under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As we come into a time of prayer, uh, again, uh, you should have received, as you remember the congregation, uh, if you're on our mailing list, uh, Len sends out the le- notice of uh, uh, prayer concerns for various people as well as what is coming up in the activity and life of the church. Uh, the following prayer concerns we have received since that was put together. Uh, many of you already know George Dilly passed away, uh, passed away on Tuesday and, and uh on Saturday, uh, he, there was a private service uh, for his, with, with his family. Matt Loddix is, uh, was Gene and Barbara's son-in-law, passed away unexpectedly. Uh, so we ask that you keep that family in your prayers. Mary Max has taken a fall and has broken a rib. And a friend of Valerie Schultz, Sandra Seed, Sandra Sneed is in the hospital with viral pneumonia uh, and cancer, and Valerie's asking for prayers for her. I ask if there are other prayer concerns that, that you have. We invite you to send them to, uh, to Len in the office. Uh, call the church office at 219-996-7161 or email Len. Uh, let us know what those concerns are. We would love to lift those prayer concerns up uh, in our daily prayers. Uh, and if you have joys that you'd like to share with the congregation, uh, please feel free to share those as well. Will you pray with me?
most holy God's source of all that is good. We gather before you seeking your grace and your love. Be present in our lives. Fill us with your light. Be generous with your love. Count us among your children. Be compassionate toward our mistakes and forgive our failings. Be gracious with your power. Strengthen us for your service. Most holy God, as we gather here this day to remember Jesus' baptism, how when he came up out of the water, your spirit proclaimed that he was your beloved son in whom you were well pleased. Our spirits resound with that proclamation. It's in his baptism that Jesus' ministry was initiated and he dedicated his life to you completely without reservation. Most holy God, help us to dedicate our lives to you as well, to offer you our very best, to be of service to you by serving in your world. Lord God, our world is in the midst of strife, wars, oppression, famine, hunger, alienation, all situations in which we have abused this world and each other, heal us and heal this world. Renew us with your life-giving waters. Reaffirm our baptism as your children. So today we come to you and we bring to you these prayer concerns. We lift up to you the family of George Dilly. We ask that you would surround them with your Holy Spirit. We lift up to you the family of Matt Loddix and ask that that same Holy Spirit surround them that in the, in the midst of their tragedy and the loss of loved ones that they would feel your presence and in that presence they could find comfort we lift up to you mary max and broken ribbon we simply ask that you would surround her that you would take away her pain as only you can that you would comfort her we ask that you would be with jim and that extended family we lift up to you sandra lord god we ask that you would be with all those listed in our bulletin you know each and every one of those needs and those situations For those that are in the hospital, we pray that you would be with the doctors and nurses treating those individuals, those families, that you would guide their minds and their decisions, that those decisions would be the right ones, the right medications, the right procedures, that those individuals would be released from the hospital, back with their loved ones as soon as possible. Lord God, we pray for our nation. So much hatred. So much hatred in this world because of outright lies. Well, God, we ask that that you would just surround us. That you would give us a sense of peace and calmness. That you would bring us together as a nation. So we pray for those who have to respond to those who are rioting. We pray for our young men and women in the military that in these unknown times that you would protect them. Oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come down once again and give us a sense of peace and calmness. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray with these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As we come into this time, normally we would love to be passing offering plates, but as we continue to meet virtually, I just want to thank you once again for your continued giving and your continued support to uh, the ministries of this church, your faithfulness. And we simply ask that, that you would continue uh, that faithfulness. And that, would you pray with me? Grace and lovely God, we just lift up to you this congregation, and we give you thanks for their faithfulness, their willingness to give not only their time, but of their tithes to support the programs that we have to reach out into this community. We ask that you simply would bless what has been given, that you would multiply it in ways that only you can, and that you would give us discernment on how best to use those resources to further your kingdom here in this community. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, first chapter, verses 4 through 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locust and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit depending, descending on him like a dove and a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us, thanks be to God. If you uh, turn on the television... During any NFL game, you are very likely to see a commercial about some rugged SUV 
running up some mountain trail. Now, it's just not any SUV. It's these rugged SUVs kicking up dirt and, and gravel, and trails that they shouldn't be on. And then at the end of that, it, it may kick to a scene where you see these, these good-looking, young-looking, athletic-looking couples setting up a camp, maybe kayaking, maybe sitting on the, the edge of a, of a rock ledge. And the whole message is that this rugged SUV got them to their destination. But the reality of it is this. Did you know that less than 5% of all SUVs ever run off-road? You are more likely to run into a Range Rover at a Starbucks than you are ever to see this SUV uh, on a trail someplace. So the question becomes is how do these owners justify their investment yeah they have purchased these rugged suvs with the hope that one day they would be able to put their four-wheel drive in gear and take off on these rugged trails when the reality of it is that the only dirt that they most likely will ever see is the dirt at the end of the soccer field where they drop their kids off so how do you rec- reconcile that or How do you fix that? Well, did you know that there is a product that you can purchase now to fix that problem? It's called spray-on mud. For between $14 and $15 a quart, you can purchase these quart-sized bottles that are filled with this secret ingredient. It's dirt from the UK with a little water and then this secret ingredient, and and you spray it on your vehicle, and it looks just like mud. A little touch here, a little touch there, and your SUV looks like you've been running off the trail all day long. Fake mudders, right? Fake mudders are, well, it's just that, right? Fake. Fake. To be real, you have to go where the dirt is at. When Jesus first comes on the scene in first century Israel, one of the first actions that he took was to seek out his cousin John. Remember John the Baptist? John lived out in the wilderness, ate locusts and and honey, dressed kind of funny. And and then we read where John begins this ministry, inviting people to the muddy waters of the Jordan to be baptized, to wash away their sins, to, to seek out forgiveness. Repentance. Standing there in the muddy waters of the Jordan River, John is offering this baptism of repentance. John calls everyone. You know, first century Jews would have understood ceremonial washing. But, but this, this immersion that John was calling for everyone this, this immersion was, was only for those to be converted to Judaism. But John's message was that all of us needed to be baptized, that all of us needed to come to the muddy waters of the Jordan. John's message was a message of equalizing what he was saying, that it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, it doesn't matter whether you are are Jew or non-Jew, it doesn't matter whether you are a religious person or rather a roustabout person, it doesn't matter who you are, that we are all in need of forgiveness, that we all need to be baptized in the muddy waters of the Jordan, if you will, to be baptized under that sense of forgiveness, to seek out forgiveness, to to repent, 
to change our ways. It's where we find ourselves in this, this lesson. Jesus comes to the muddy, muddy waters of the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Jesus is standing in, the, in, that, in that dirty water. And this message really is a message of this, that if you are going to be my followers, then here's what you need to prepare yourself for. Don't expect room service. Don't expect a mint on the pillow. Don't expect Perrier, uh, an afternoon latte. Now, if you're going to be my followers, we're going to start in the muddy waters of the Jordan. And we're going to end up dying on a cross that Jesus himself is going to invite you to embrace. So Jesus comes to the edge of the water and John recognizes him with those words that you come to me to be baptized when I need to be baptized. You, I am unworthy. I am not even worthy to stoop down and un- to tie the thongs of your sandals. You come to me when I need to be baptized by you. And yet Jesus willingly steps into the muddy waters to receive that mark of baptism. When we are baptized, we take on that same mark, if you will. So the question I want to ask you, what does your baptism say about you? I mean, we understand baptism as, as a mark of God's favor, unmerited at best, but still a mark of God's favor. We see Jesus' baptism, really a form of anointing. We see the Trinity in action, the Son receiving the blessing, with the Father expressing His love for His Son, and the Spirit descending upon Jesus like a dove. And we hear those words. This is my beloved, whom I am well pleased. What do we think about our baptism? And what do we think about baptism for others when when we see that? When we are part of a service where baptism takes place? How do we recognize baptism as an expression of God's favor? Unmerited at best, but still an expression of God's love for us. And it's in our baptism that that we have to recognize that we can't fake out God. That that we can't be something that we're not. It's our baptism that makes us come clean. It's through that repentance and confession where we where you can receive God's blessing. That we would hear those words. Very good. The baptism of Jesus. It's anointing, if you will. Jesus was anointed. Yeah, first century Kings of Israel were anointed, were marked as a symbol of their office and their responsibility. Jesus' baptism was a symbol of anointing for him, the beginning of his ministry. Our baptism is a symbol of the ministry that we are called into. Our baptism calls us into this this ministry. We pledge allegiance to a kingdom, but a different kingdom. The kingdom of God. Baptism marks us, sets us apart. Sets us apart different from the the world. Tells us that the world's idea of power is not the same as God's idea. You know, when the the great reformer Martin Luther was tempted, he, he would often put his hand on top of his head to remind him that he was baptized with Christ. 
that he could resist temptation because of that connection. Our baptism, our baptism in Christ calls us to be a different people. Peculiar, passionate people who are sent out to follow Jesus, to try to change the world. Our baptism is really a form of commissioning. It's our call to go out into a world, a world that is hurting, a world that needs help. Jesus' message was a message that the kingdom of heaven is present here and now. It's something that we could experience in the very real part of where we are at. What does our baptism remind you? What does our baptism say about us? What we do matters. What we say matters. And our baptism is a reminder for us of whose we are and who we are. Our baptism calls us in Invites us into this new reality to, to, to accept, acknowledge, experience the ever-present love of God here and now. To acknowledge that God is at work in our lives even now. Living as, as baptized followers of Jesus Christ, we can't fake. We can't be something that we want to be without truly understanding our calling. To be followers of Jesus Christ means that we are to be of the world but not in the world. There's no amount of spray on mud that can change who we are. Jesus willingly waded into the the muddy waters. And he calls us to, to wade into that muddy waters as well. It doesn't mean we go to the Jordan River, but it means that we can wade into the mud that we see in our world today. That we're called to speak out when we see injustice. That we're called to be people to seek that justice for all mankind. How do you remember your baptism? In the United Methodist Church, many of us were baptized as youth. And, and so you say, well, I really don't remember. Well, we live our lives and, and when at, we become of that age where we accept ourselves for ourselves, that calling that was made for us during our baptism. And as we see other people baptized, as we witness the water being poured into the basin and the liturgy of, of the baptism that says it's not about water, but it's about God's grace. And oftentimes we will end that liturgy with remember your baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who should wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down.
down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way. And who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wait? As we celebrate today the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we remember that calling, that baptism, we remember what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ. Today probably is more important than any other day and any other time. As we have so much strife going on. So much anger, so much hurt, so much pain. Maybe it's time for us to remember that we are called to be followers of Jesus Christ, to go out into a hurting world, to make a difference, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't afraid to stride into the muddy waters of the Jordan River. We are called to wade in to the muddy waters of life that we are seeing today. To be His hands and feet. To make a difference. Remember your baptism. And be thankful. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen and amen.